<laughs> All right, today, quit trying to hold my hand. Dude. <laughs> All right, today we're standing very close. Uh, today we're doing bourbon. Yeah, well, before we do the bourbon, I want to uh, let everybody know that off camera, Daniel just had to throw out the word YOLO. Yeah, because I just learned what it means. <laughs> because he's 15 years old uh, and four years ago. No, I said, I said YOLO about three months ago. I Googled what YOLO means. It means you only live once, for those of you who don't know. And then he downed Do you his think there's anyone feet. watching that doesn't know what YOLO means? Sure. Yeah, adults. <laughs> Mature people. Yeah. <laughs> you just complimented me. Uh, well, thank you. Uh, wait, All right. Take it back. Cut it. <laughs> cut, cut that part. Yeah. Okay, so we're doing uh, Henry McKenna. Now, keep in mind, um, and I've mentioned this before, I'm not really a bourbon guy. I'm the wrong guy to talk glowing about bourbon. I like bourbon. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. I, I have bourbon at the house. I drink it regularly. But I love scotch. Right. Here's, I enjoy bourbon. Yes. Here's why I think this show is horribly lopsided. <laughs> because what? you introduced me to the world of whiskey, and yeah. it was scotch, 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 scotch. <laughs> and then, oh, by the way, they'd also have bourbon. Yeah, that, and there's also it. the... But and in, some rye, man. In my experience, um, and maybe you've already talked about this, but bourbon, the spectrum of flavors, is about that wide, right? Because mm -hmm. a bourbon is a bourbon, and there's going to have some variations in there, which can be good. Scotch, it's more like... Uh, wine, it's more like coffee, it's more like beer, where the, the spectrum of flavors is much, much wider. So I don't dislike bourbon, but it doesn't excite me. It's not like, oh, what's going to be in this glass? It's like, I'm pretty damn sure what's going to be in the glass every time I have bourbon. That being said, I've had some really great bourbons that are complex, but it's much harder, much more rare for me to have a bourbon like that. Okay, I'm going to slightly disagree with you. Well, you'll, you're going to be wrong, but go ahead. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, the difference has to do, I think, with uh, in Scottish whiskey. Yeah. When you're adding smoke to things, mm -hmm. then where you're getting the peat from can completely change things. Right. So at the end of your process, the, the peat you're burning in Isla is different than the peat you're burning in uh, Aberdeenshire, different than the peat you're burning in the Lowlands, right? Okay. Um, and so you get a lot of variations on a, another ingredient. In bourbon, all of your variations are in grain mix. Okay. And in shape of stills and things like this. But in bourbon, you're doing a lot more column still, which uh, purifies but doesn't add as much character as uh, the straight pot stills. So I'm, I'm going to agree with you. I'm like I know what you're talking yeah, about. Okay. Stills. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. But I'm going to agree with you that I feel like there's a narrower bandwidth of flavor. Yeah. Um, but that it's not, that doesn't mean it's narrow. Okay. It's more narrow than scotch, yeah. but there's still a breadth of flavors and options in bourbon. Right. Uh, because as long as you start a new oak for at least two years, you can do anything you want. Mm. Right. So bourbon, just, uh, two years in new oak and that's bourbon. Now this is bottled in bond. Now, but one, one quick second. Is it still okay that I smell some of the Balcones in this? No, bottle? it's not okay. Okay. I need a new glass. I don't want to. I want to give this bourbon, this bourbon, every uh, opportunity to shine here. <laughs> All right. So yeah, remember we're shooting these videos three or four at a time, which is why we're both wearing the same thing. And Rex looks like a an extra from a Peter Pan movie. This is why <laughs> I'm not quite drunk, but no. <laughs> Give me. Okay. It's not, you know, it's not enough. Wait, you're adding water to an empty, clean glass. Uh, it's not clean. I smell the balconies. Come on. No, no, that was a new glass. Oh. <laughs> All right, I am drunk. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so bottled in bond. Do you even want to know what that means? Do you care? As a consumer, as and let, wait, let me accent. As an uneducated consumer, do you even want to know what bottled in bond means? Personally, I couldn't give a rat's ass. Okay, then we'll move on. No, no, no. But as a stand-in for people watching this, okay. can you give me a 45-second version? Yes, I can give you even shorter. Because I'm suspicious this could be very boring. No, bottled in bond, uh, the irony of American whiskey is yeah. that uh, in the land of the free, home of the brave, we have some of the most restrictive whiskey legislation in the world. Okay. And as far as what you can put on the bottle, not as far as what you can make, but as far as how you can label it. Right. Bottled in bond means that it was made at one distillery by the same master distiller 
And that if it doesn't have an age statement under four, yeah. then it's at least four years old. Okay. Now you can have bottled and bond two year old bourbon, mm -hmm. but it has to say bottled and bond two hmm. years old. Yeah. yeah. Once you get to four, you don't have to put an age on it. Then you can just say bottled and bond with no age statement. Right. And so this is, now we know it's 10, so that's sort of a cheat. Right. But if you ever see bottled and bond on a bottle and it doesn't have an age, it's at least four years old. Hmm. And not only was it made at the same distillery, but it had to be made and overseen by the same master distiller, mm. which is extremely restrictive, right? right? So say you're the master distiller at a bourbon distillery, right. and you uh, make a batch in 2015. Right. And then you get fired because, you know. Yeah. And, and then I'm, I get... Because I'm unemployable. And then I get hired. <laughs> you like the story? I hate and then I get hired. I said, hold on a second. I said 45 seconds. Oh, I yeah. Know. No problem. No, we're, no. we're two minutes into this thing. No, no, no. We're... And I said, is it boring? Watch the clock. I was like, no, it's not it's boring. It's not boring. It's hilarious. And I'm insulting. Waiting. I'm waiting for the yeah. not boring part. Yeah, so uh, we still haven't even drank any whiskey. Yeah. So essentially, I couldn't sell bottled and bond whiskey that I made for another four years. Hmm. Whereas we could sell your bottled and bond to make up the gap if we had four-year-old whiskey. Now, um, I am going to go on the record as saying, for the money, there's no better whiskey than Henry McKenna in Ooh. bourbon. In bourbon. In bourbon, okay. In bourbon, uh, around $30 or less a bottle, you will not find a better bourbon than Henry McKenna. And I stumbled onto it in a bar in Austin. I'm getting f very floral. Right on Now, the remember, this is uh, somewhere around... 75% corn and then in the teens in rye and then malt barley and um, And bourbon just means at least 51% corn. This one's around three quarters corn It's not coconut. It's not margarita It's um What's that drinky pina colada if you like pina colada I'm getting pina colada <laughs> Maybe that's why I like it. Dude. Maybe I'm a parrot head. It's floral, it's pina colada. I'm tasting it. And dude, it took us seven minutes to take our first drink of whiskey. Yeah, we're bad at this. I'm so sorry. We're really bad at doing this. But mm. we're, you know. But it is good. I mean, it was worth the wait. 10 year. Yeah. Am I right? See, this is what I do whenever I had nothing to say. I'll pick up the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> I'll look and I'm like, oh, I'm thinking very impressive uh, thoughts. Oh, there's words back here too. Now, Henry McKenna was Irish. He moved from Ireland to Kentucky. As somebody who's one eighth Scottish, I won't hold that against him. <laughs> That's okay. I'm a Scottish in English as well. So uh, he moved to Kentucky. Yeah. He was already making whiskey in Ireland, evidently. Mm -hmm. And he brought his knowledge of whiskey making to Kentucky and discovered bourbon and decided this is the new thing. Mm. And then he insisted that his whiskey be aged in barrels. Mm -hmm. He was part of the original group of people saying, hey, let's age this stuff before we sell it. Yeah, yeah. Pretty freaking cool. Yeah. And actually, if you look at the history of whiskey in America, we entirely have to thank the Scots and the Irish for bringing their whiskey knowledge to the States as immigrants. Yeah. And then introducing it to America with uh, local grains. Whiskey. They were they were hipster before it was cool. They showed up and made local grain whiskey. <laughs> the definition of hipster is much less annoying than mine. But yeah, 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 that's probably true. Mm, that is good. And I can't find anything bad to say about this, but I picked one that I loved for a reason. Yeah, it's not. Uh, it's not overly sour. Mm -hmm. I'm always going to get some sourness, at least for me, from bourbons, but it's not that overly sour bourbon. Uh, and I'm going to guess that the overly sour note, uh, I'll talk about this later, but I think that's new oak. Oh, okay. I have a whole theory that the sa that new oak brings a sour flavor okay. to whiskeys. We have watched uh, this bottle for far too long. <laughs> yes, we have. Yeah. All right. Till tomorrow. May your crazy stay this side of legal, and may you return to us before we have time to miss you. Cheers. Cheers.